Nothing you're about to hear should be taken as or used in place of medical advice. If you resemble anything you hear, contact your doctor. If you want to know what Walgreens thinks, ask them, because we don't know. Please wait behind the line for privacy. You're listening to the Pharmacist Answers Podcast. I'm Cynthia, the pharmacist, and today you'll get your questions answered and your curiosity cured. We're going to talk about sunscreen today and how it works and what it does for you in certain situations and then how you can best protect your skin against sun exposure because sun exposure is the number one thing that causes skin cancer and we'll talk about the type of cancers later this week but today we're going to talk about uh, sunscreen and how it all works. So there's two different products that you can put on your skin to protect you from sun exposure. One is in a group called sunscreen. That's the one we hear most. And then sunblock. Now back when sunblock was originally developed, it had to be opaque because it didn't, it's exactly what it does. It blocks the skin the sun from getting to your skin. So just the way you wear clothes and clothes blocks the sun from getting to your skin, the sun block in a cream paste form, you couldn't see through it. The biggest memory in my brain when I think of sun block is um, Screech from Saved by the Bell. And they were, when they had their whole season, when they were like in Hawaii and doing all this stuff. Okay, and he would have the white nose. His nose would be all white. That was sun block. And now the sun blocks, they've kind of micronized all of the particles in there. So it's not white cream that stays on your face anymore. It, it fades in and is, you can see through it. So your skin looks normal. You don't look like you have white patches on you. But that's how I always pictured sunblock was that, that white nose that you would see in TV shows and movies and stuff where they were like protecting their, it was like, why is it just on your nose? They're protecting their nose from the sun. Okay. So sunscreen is, I think of it like a screen door. So if you've ever had like a mesh screen on a door or window and the light kind of like flickers when you look through it, because it's filtering the light, it doesn't allow 100% of the light through. When you put sunscreen on your skin, it filters the light. So not all of the light makes it through. All of the light that's shining on your skin doesn't make it through into the deeper layers of your skin. So that sunscreen, it helps filter it out. Where sunblock is the opaque where it bounces off. It is. It has reflective particles in it. Um, so like little teeny tiny mirrors that you put on your body that don't have to be white anymore. They've, they've fixed that. But it reflects and allows the light to just bounce off. So none of the light gets through to your skin. Back to the basics of how sunlight works. Sunlight has the visible light that we see that makes everything light up. And then it has the UV light or ultraviolet light. And that is the light that has more energy as it's waving down through the atmosphere. It has more energy, so thus it's able to penetrate the layers of your skin where the, the reason that you can look at your skin and you see it is because the visible light hits the skin and then bounces off. And, and so if that light was absorbed, you wouldn't see it. But because it hits your skin and bounces off, then you, that's how you see light. Physics lesson. So the UV light is, has high energy. There is actually three types of UV light that is emitted by the sun, but one of them is already absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere, so we don't ever get exposed to that. The two that make it to us is the UVA and UVB. UVA is a little more energetic, and it is the type that is specifically responsible for causing your skin cells to mutate and lead to cancer. UVB is a little less energetic, and it is the one that's responsible for stimulating your cells that creates the melanocytes. So it stimulates your cells enough for them to make melanocytes, and that's how you get tan. Or if you get too much UVB exposure, then it stimulates your cells and causes inflammation, and that's how you get sunburn. 
So UVB is related is responsible for tanning and and sunburns. Where the UVA it does it has no benefit to our bodies and is specifically responsible for causing the cells to to turn cancerous. So that's why it's important for us to protect our skin because we don't want our skin to be mutating and doing anything weird. So back to the two types of skin products that you can put on for sun protection. The sunscreen is if you look it up and you'll see things on like Wikipedia and all kinds of places and it's like sunscreen is made up of organic compounds that do blah 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 blah. And that that word organic is organic as in like organic chemistry and not organic like organic vegetables. So in organic chemistry an organic compound is usually made up of the type of elements that we would find in the Earth's crust, kind of. So carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, those kinds of things. So so it's, a, it's an organic chemistry type compound. You rub it on your skin, and because it's a screen, just back to like, the, like a window screen or a screen door, it filters out the light, and so not as much reach through, and all of the parts of the light that don't reach through your skin that gets filtered is actually absorbed by those organic compounds. Some are specifically designed to absorb the UVAs. Some are specifically designed to absorb the UVBs. Few of them are designed and they'll actually absorb both. But the goal of that absorption is that it's very possible that a small percentage of those UV rays are going to still get through to your skin. That's why you can wear sunscreen and you can be outside longer, but you may still develop a tan because those UV rays have made it through and, and stimulated your melanocytes for them to produce melanin. The melanin is what makes your skin colored. So... Let me show you my picture. This is the this is our skin layers. This is what your epidermis looks like and all of the layers. So you would apply sunscreen up here on the surface. As the UV rays come through, the screen will absorb some of those rays, but the ones that make it through, if they make it all the way down to this layer where your skins are your cells are actually still alive and trying to divide and using their DNA, that's where they can get kind of messed up and lead to mutations. But your melanocytes are down here in your basal layer, and they're the ones that if they get stimulated by those UV rays, they get a panic signal to say, hey, we're, we're being obliterated, so they will produce more melanin and start reproducing faster. So then that melanin ends up up here in the layer, a little higher, that's responsible for turning your skin colors. Not weird colors, but darkening the shades of your skin. Because melanin is actually a natural skin protectant. The more melanin someone has in their natural skin layers, then the more UV rays will be absorbed naturally before they reach the dividing cells down here that can be damaged. Pale white girl like me, not very much melanin protection, so I can burn out in the sun really quick. So, then the second type of skin product that we put on, like I said, was the sun blocks. And they have reflective particles in them that they have now micronized and made teeny, teeny, tiny. So, you don't have to put white paste on your skin anymore. It goes on just like lotion, but the particles in it reflect the light back away from your body. So, you get zero absorption into your body with sun blocks. So, that's like 100% protection. The same way that wearing clothes over your skin doesn't allow the UV rays to get to your skin underneath. The sunscreens are usually numbered. You've probably seen them. It's the SPF numbers, so 15, 30, 45, 50. 50 is really the maximum that they can do effectively. Now, you, again, you have 100% protection with clothes and with sunblock, but sunscreens, the SPF, or it's the sun protection factor. The sun protection factor math was really hard for some reason for me to like grasp in my head, but think about how long you can be out in the sun with no sunscreen on, no skin protection, how long you can be out in the sun with no protection before you, you start burning, so your skin starts turning red from the sun exposure. Whatever that number is, whether it's 15 minutes, 
30 minutes, an hour, whatever that number is. The SPF number allows you to multiply your unprotected time by that number and then you will get your protected time in the sun. So if I and my pale self can be out in the sun for 15 minutes before my skin starts turning red from sun exposure, then I can wear a SPF 15 and then 15 minutes times 15 would equal the amount of time that I can wear that sunscreen out in the sun. So that's 15 15 minute increments. So if there's four 15 minute increments in an hour, then that would be three hours, I'm having to do the math fast, three hours and 45 minutes. And that's, that's if I'm just out in the sun. That's not if I'm sweating, that's not if I'm swimming, that's just out in the sun. SPF 15 will give me almost four hours worth of protection. That protection starts to wear off because one, you, it's very hard to be out in the sun and not sweat. I don't know anybody that could do that. But two, your natural skin oil will eventually start to dilute the sunscreen and those compounds that are in it on your skin. So then it, the protection wears off closer to the end. Thus, the Skin Cancer Foundation, the recommendations is that you reapply any type of sunscreen to your body every two hours, no matter what. That way, you're, you're getting that maximum concentration and your skin is as covered as possible without any dilution from natural skin moisture or sweat or water activities that you may be doing outside when it's hot. That's how SPFs work. They also recommend that you... Put sunscreen on every single day, at least on your face, 15 SPF or higher. Because even in the wintertime, it's 30 degrees outside, but the sun is shining. So even me walking out from wherever I am to my car outside, if it's not in a garage, I'm getting some, some sun exposure. Walking to the mailbox gets me some sun exposure. Walking from my car into the daycare to pick up my kids and then back out again, I'm getting some sun exposure. It's that daily sun exposure, if you're unprotected, that they think leads to a greater chance of skin cancer production and your skin cells being more likely to mutate and become something bad in your skin versus just reproducing themselves nice and happy and healthy. The other recommendations for UV protection that the Skin Cancer Foundation recommend, UV protecting sunglasses. They don't necessarily have to be polarized, but they have to have the certified UV ray protection for, for A and B. You also want sunscreen that has protection for A and B. Some people will just get sunscreen that protects for A because that's the cancer causing ones, so then they can still get the Bs and still get the tan. It may take longer for UVB to cause damage in your cells, but the more you tan, because the cells are having to replicate faster to get you the melanin for the tan, the more likely you are to get a rogue cell with a, some kind of mutation mistake, and then that can become cancerous. So tanning still just isn't a good idea. So tanning for fun shouldn't be on your agenda. Even though society has led us to believe that tanned skin is more beautiful than pale skin, tough luck, I'm gonna stay pale. So daily sunscreen, 15 or higher, UV protecting sunglasses, don't tan for fun. The number one way to get protection is to cover up your body. If you're having to be outside, one of the best recommendations is if you're having to be outside to do yard work or gardening or anything like that, actually wearing summertime long sleeves, wearing a broad brimmed hat to cover your face because the shade and the, the clothes covering is going to protect your skin at 100% versus a smaller percent that a sunscreen would. Staying in the shade or in, indoors completely during those peak hours, which they say is 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., especially in the spring and summer, that's when the sun is highest in the sky. So you're not getting as much atmosphere deflection of the UV rays, so they're making their way through. Where early in the morning and later in the evening, the sun is lower on the horizon. So there's more atmosphere for it to have to travel through, and then the energy of those rays is lower when they reach you.
The thing that I had not known that they recommended is that you do a monthly head-to-toe skin check for moles, freckles, and skin tags. If anything looks new or changed or ugly, and ugly in a sense that it looks freakish and not not ugly as in like, I don't like the place where this mole is. Um, moles pop up in places. Not all raised moles are bad. As long as moles are round, you're good. As long as they're not deathly scary black or like crazy red, you're probably okay. Freckles, as long as they're nice and round and don't have like jaggedy at weird edges, you're probably okay. Moles, freckles, skin tags. You want to check yourself head to toe on a monthly basis or have some help for some places where like you can't you can't get your eyeballs to 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 check for anything new that's popped up or anything that has changed since the last time you checked it. That's early detection because if you can get moles or skin tags or anything like that checked, even if they check it and be like, okay, this was cool, better to have it checked than to wait until some checkup, if some people get a checkup once a year. Some people probably haven't even had a checkup where somebody like checked their skin. They just like check all the stuff on the inside. That waiting in between those skin checkups um, can be the difference between catching something really early and something spreading through your body and you needing serious treatment for cancer just because of some skin abnormality that you thought was like, hmm, this is weird. It can lead to something really bad. So head to toe skin checks. I call it a skin scan. Head to toe skin scan once a month for yourself or get a buddy. And then having your doctor check your skin once a year. Some people have to go for other primary care things more often than once a year. But at least once a year having your doctor do the check for you so they can have a keener eye for something that may be something to watch or something that they might want to check right away or whatever. That's one of the important ways. We have lots of skin. Skin is considered the biggest organ on your body. So there's lots of skin to take care of. Our face is specifically sensitive to a lot of things. Having the knowledge to be able to protect it and the right things that you should put on it, that is one of the best ways to keep it healthy um, for as long as possible. Because as we talked last week, the sun exposure also can damage a lot of the, the proteins that keep your skin nice and tight and springy and elastic. And that's what leads to premature aging and premature wrinkles. Because the sunlight, um, those UV rays, abuse those proteins and they're not able to be replenished or they're not able to heal completely. So then that area of the skin is permanently damaged for skin damage and, and wrinkles and sagging and things like like that. So not only are we trying to protect the things that probably our vanity worry about when it comes to, to healthy skin and not looking older than we really are, but also the things that can threaten our health like skin cancer because it is more serious and affects more people than a lot of other types of things. So anyway, happy Monday! Thanks for listening to the Pharmacist Answers podcast. The pharmacy is now closed. You can post your questions and comments on our Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash farm answers pod. Or you can email the show at pharmacist answers here at gmail.com. You can tweet me or message me on Twitter at Sin Hendricks. You can find the show notes at pharmacist answers here dot wordpress.com pharmacist answers broadcast live on monday wednesday and thursday at 902 a.m eastern time on the periscope app you can follow me at sin hendrix or view in your web browser at periscope.tv slash sin hendrix see you next time on the pharmacist answers podcast